Oh, hello. So I am back on the Minecraft server, and as you can see, I'm actually wearing some uh, protection. I've got Respiration 3 as well as Depthstrider because if you watched the previous Let's Play, we're out in the middle of nowhere. And by middle of nowhere, I mean like, let's see, we are thousands of blocks away. So with that being said, why are we out here? If you haven't watched the previous Let's Play, uh, we are going to be out here building an entire guardian farm so we can get a bunch of sea lanterns and prismarine and all this different blocks that currently we are not incorporating into anything out there because it is just simply too hard to get these blocks and so i want to do a farm and if you watch the episode you know i haven't actually done one of these farms before this is actually my first time at this type of a well that just was silly at this type of a structure because i used to play on the xbox and they didn't have these when i was playing on the xbox and then I get to building a whole bunch of different things on the server. So I'm finally out here. And it sounds like we're actually going to be doing a lot more with this. Um, come on. What is the problem? So I think we're going to actually be making a water world out here. Everything's going to be under the... Jeez, that freaked me out. Under the water. Just kind of creating a whole city out here. So that'll come in time, but I need to get this thing rolling first because I want to try to get this farm going and then I'll worry about trying to create a whole town out here too. So we'll get through this. This is not going to be enough to fill this. In fact, just to get the base lay layer out here as well as this took about two whole inventory fulls. So I do not anticipate getting this whole thing done on camera. Um, so I will do as much as I can during this 20-30 uh, minute episode. I also don't plan on this lasting me the whole 20 minutes, so I'm going to have to go refill off camera. Um, I've been farming islands over there, but I've been keeping the actual design of the... F seriously? Keeping the design of the islands in shape, so I'm trying to preserve as much as I can the natural design of this place but still getting as much sand as I can. And I've been going farming for as much gravel as possible. That's just, that one takes a little bit more time to actually do. And I've basically raided every single person's storage. I'm gonna give back all the stuff that I've got, but man, oh man, oh man, do I use a lot of gravel and sand. So, with all that being said, the topic for today as far as um, Minecraft theology, I was thinking about what I was wanting to discuss because there's a lot of different topics I sort of could talk about, but I don't think I could pull off 20, 30 minute episode about. And then I realized I'm doing an entire church tech devotional and I haven't been talking about this. Let me first say I've been at this project for about three and a half months. I was in a let's get this done mode recently with a holiday. And unfortunately, I first of all got sick and so I stopped working on it for a little bit and then when I had the time and the energy to be able to do it somehow I lost the entire footage or file and I don't know where it went so I've had to start over in this process but it's easier a second time once you've kind of gotten down the flow of things and you know what the different scripture is about and you've done the research and everything so it goes much faster the second time so anyways the the devotional is coming along and the idea behind it is we're working in the book of Nehemiah and the book of Nehemiah is about a man who is a cupbearer to the king and before Jesus had come along it's in that interim between um, the Israelite nation being a, a nation that was influential and then on the other end when Jesus came back and so Israel was present but completely overtaken by the Romans and so there's this period in time where the Israelite nation is captured and what do we do and Jerusalem's been ransacked by all of its enemies because they weren't following God's calling and so God punished them because of that and so everybody's enslaved everybody is following G following God but realizing that they don't have a home nation and, and that was one of God's promises it was a covenant that he had made with them and so Nehemiah comes to the picture and says you know what um, God's given me this calling to restore Jerusalem and that's basically what happens in the next I think 12 chapters of Nehemiah 
And so I'm trying to go through this devotional of what does this look like as far as what Nehemiah did in the past contextually and trying to really get an understanding of that. And I mean, I'm really enjoying this process because we're getting understanding of what was happening in the past, including details of people and gates that were happening, which it's all this feels like this Levitical boring stuff that happens. And I have found a way to kind of give it life to that story. And then there is all of the details that are really easy to apply, but then difficult to actually put into application. And so we're understanding the historical context of what this means for Jerusalem. Oh, I've got the, if, if you guys don't know, when you come out here to these water temples, there's mining fatigue, which means that it just takes forever to mine. Come on, can we do it? Oh my goodness, this is so slow. I'm just going to keep moving on. Um, so anyways, there's this, just this mentality of understanding the historical concept because that's good theology to understand what the Bible was saying back at that time. But then it's also good theology to be able to apply it to now, which is called hermeneutics. So you're taking the old contextual process and then you're applying it to your own life. And so I'm really enjoying this process of just getting into the hermeneutics for myself personally, but then also a recognition that in our lives with church technology people, we don't have a devotional for ourselves. So this is actually a specifically a devotional for church technology people. And it, it might seem, I've heard a lot of people that have gotten into the um, chicken soup for the soul and then they did like a hundred different iterations for random people and said, we really don't need this. And I would, I tend to disagree with that thought process that we shouldn't specialize the process for a devotional, which is obviously why I'm going for a church technology devotional with this process. But understanding that church technology doesn't necessarily have its own devotional yet, I feel personally that church technology is a special ministry that is serving the church in a unique way and should be served in a unique fashion as well since we are serving the church. And so we're just going through this process of what does it mean applying Nehemiah's understanding of rebuilding Jerusalem and then applying it to church technology. There's a lot of great stuff, whether it's personally for someone within church technology ministry that has that church tech mindsets, whether it's new gadgets and um, wanting to be the stereotypical introverted church technology person or more to that. But then it also talks about leadership and how can we serve well and how do we find favor with God? How do we find favor with men? Um, how do we face adversity? There's a lot of great context for this that I think will be a wonderful resource for people within church technology that can just do this well. And so my hope is that um, we use some of this to better serve our churches, that we can be spiritually fed. Um, I got to talk with Carl Barnhill who does a whole unique ministry for churches. He he does the motion graphics, but then he also is doing a podcast and other stuff, which helps promote that stuff. But he loves to talk about how to serve well within the church as far as church technology and just realizing that we can serve well in that process, but we are not excluded from understanding scripture and praying and and being compassionate and reaching out to others about Jesus and so that was a really fun conversation. But one of the things that came up in that for me was that is absolutely needed. And yet I don't think that we do that enough in a, in a big C church kind of understanding. Um, I know there's a lot of great churches out there that do this well with their church technology group. Um, but at least as far as the resources I read online, it's here's the greatest gadget or how is this technology going to corrupt your church or Snapchat is just the spawn of Satan. And so we talk about the tech a lot, but we don't talk about the hearts of our church tech people. So for me, this devotional, that's where we're kind of hitting at with this process. Um, so I think it's going to be really good. I, I love the, the hermeneutics. Um, if you guys don't know, my background was doing youth ministry. And so I have a degree in family ministry and do love to do the hermeneutics of the process. I didn't get any kind of formal education in Greek or 
or a, what's the other one, Greek or Hebrew. Um, so I'm not sitting there translating the process, but I'm certainly not just relying on what the text itself says. Um, good hermeneutics not only looks at what the text says itself and also how it applies to your life, but you look at the the cultural understanding of the process. What did their culture say? Just because I read words on a paper does not mean I understand the cultural aspect of the thing. This comes out in the devotional. There's a couple different parts where we add the cultural understanding of this. And so that's interesting just to recognize that we can learn from a history of over 2000 years ago. Hey, we got a new guy. Um, <laughs> Mugavi is jumping back on. Let's see. Um, and so the, the, the collision of two cultures is really difficult because I also, not only do I recognize that there's a culture from before, which is good hermeneutics from that standpoint, but then I totally recognize that there are so many different cultures within church in general, let alone church technology. There's big church and little church. And what does that mean? There is uh, church planting versus a hundred year established church. There is, we don't believe technology should be use more than just a projector within the church and then there's let's use all the gadgets that we possibly can to forward the thinking of christ into the entire world including online church and and sign in uh, kiosks and everything else like that so i realize that there's a lot within the culture and making a devotional for something like this is really it's been really taxing to recognize that there's so many different voices i could be speaking towards but then also just trying to keep true to the text itself. Um, if you guys have ever done any kind of worship or sermon process, you probably understand what this means because of the context of the culture for the congregation. And that's in a local setting of, of the local community and re realizing that you're probably only going to get a limited number of, of cultures in that process. This is looking at a devotional that can be shared worldwide internationally let alone just within the U.S. So it's going to be an interesting process. I, I'm curious to see how it's received, um, but I know that at least within my own heart, this has been good for me personally. And so I'm happy with what I have, even if it's just for me and, and trying to do ministry in general. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing what results from it, but we'll kind of just take it step by step and, and receive the feedback. All right, so I'm down to one last stack. I'm going to go get more sand. <coughs> we got so much more wall to finish. I'm going to go get an inventories full, and then I will be right back, guys. All right, guys, I am back on the server, and it's the next day. It took me quite a while to get sand. Um, I was over here farming, just trying to keep the lay of the land. I literally have farmed this entire island and let me just show you what i mean by that by have farmed the island so it looks normal looks natural well if you look here there's dirt oh hello mister and then there's like entire chunks under here that are just vacant so it's this is basically hollowed out with one layer of dirt and one layer of sand on top of it so what i've done is i actually went all the way over here this was about 10 15 blocks high and I have reduced it down to that level. It looks really ugly anyways, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, but this was like, it's, it's here now, but it was probably about this high of sand. And I've just basically taken off an entire half of this island. I'm probably going to lower it a little bit more just so it doesn't look super ridiculous. And then, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do because if we come over here, and I tried to kind of leave the design a little bit normal and at the same time tried to terraform it a little bit too. If we come over here, it's just one big drop. And so it's kind of a hazard too. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. We'll figure it out. But anyways, I've got more sand if you notice just a little bit. So we'll go place some more blocks over here. I'm trying to think of where I left off with the topic of the devotional since it's been 12 hours. Um, I think the big thing about the devotional 
I don't know if you guys have ever created a devotional. This is not my first one I've ever created. This isn't my first rodeo. Uh, when I was doing youth ministry, I actually created a devotional for my volunteers. I then created a devotional for my students. Um, I really enjoyed that process of just being able to go through that. Um, and at the time I was taking some hermeneutics classes or I had just completed them the year before or something like that. So I was really into the whole process of making sure everything was appropriate and kosher and whatnot. And, and by the time I got done with it, I really had enjoyed the process to the point that I started writing devotionals for youth ministry for the national public. And I've, I've created five or six of them and sold them online for various companies made a good amount of money with that process. And I'm not necessarily doing this for the money anymore. I'm doing this because the the church tech community itself just doesn't have a representation in this process. And I wonder if something like this would spur on this concept of wanting to do ministry as opposed to just technology, where I feel like right now the conversation is, let's just get in for the tech, the ability to use our gifts, which is a great thing. I want you to use your gifts. I want you to be able to support the church. But we don't feed each other spiritually. We don't look at the scripture in our own unique worldview, our unique lens in life. And I think that when we realize that we have gone from using hammers and trying to cast different tools and weapons from the zero century when Rome was around and Jesus was around to where we are at now with our technology, that is a huge, unique understanding of culture and where we've come through this process and why in the world would we not want to speak into the understanding of scripture and the Bible and everything that goes with that, as well as just be able to nourish our own souls for the sake of becoming better Christians and, and seeking God in this entire process. That comment right there of seeking God in this entire process sometimes gets lost in the whole um, just church tech process, the church tech ministry. And it's not people being malicious and saying, let's just avoid Jesus because we're here to do tech stuff. It's there's a lot that is required of us in this process of trying to do technology. And so sometimes we focus on the trainings and we focus on the gadgets and and the process and the orientation and trying to meet the needs of the worship leader and the senior pastor that we forget about us. And so one of my goals for Church Mag with 2016, I wrote a whole article on a whole bunch of different goals, including addressing pornography and women and technology, including what the church has to say about it. But then also just making church technology in and of itself a ministry, not a uh, tech gadgets foray, but an actual ministry where we are doing ministry type things. And I think that this is one of the things that has to happen. If we're going to talk about who Jesus is to people, we need to be able to understand what it means for us personally. So this devotion is going to hit at a lot of different things. It's going to hit at understanding how we do devotions well, but then also just reading scriptures appropriately. Um, and I say this knowing that not everybody is at where I'm at and I'm not necessarily where I'm going to be at in the future, but we don't read scriptures well sometimes. I don't think that we, I don't think that hermeneutics is done to an understanding of how to get the most out of scripture that we could possibly get. Now, I also recognize that sometimes we don't, we just read it for the sake of trying to get a sermon out of it and we don't actually read and ingest the scripture itself. And so I realize that Eugene Peterson's Eat This Book, he talks about eating this book where we consume it and we let it permeate through us and allow the scriptures to fully invest in us. That's a huge thing. Um, in fact, I haven't talked about it with the hermeneutics process, but um, when I was receiving my education in, in seminary, I've gone to two different seminaries in this process and talked about hermeneutics. The discussion of not only trying to understand the old culture, but the new culture, but then allowing the Holy Spirit to invest in our lives sometimes gets lost in this understanding of hermeneutics and, and just trying to read the Bible well and just letting God speak to you in this place at this time, because it's God breathed. The, the word is God breathed in and of itself, um, but then also the Holy Spirit is speaking to your life as well. And so 
What does that mean for you as a person? What does that mean for you as an individual, as a leader within the church? If you're volunteering, even if you're not paid staff, if you are volunteering, you are a leader in that church. You are serving the kingdom and you're probably serving in a way that no other person has that capacity at your church. And so you're a unique person. You are a wonderful creation that you need to continue to be invested in scripturally so that you are continuing to serve well in this process. We might actually get this wall done. Now, we are not going to finish this by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. So I'll make sure I get the rest of this done whenever I'm off camera. But yeah, I think that for me, I am... <clears throat> So my background is in uh, as a Baptist, and so I grew up with King James Version for a long time in my life, um, and then have just delved into what Scripture means in general and recognizing that each person's a unique place in their life. And so having now been through a couple other denominations and non-denomination ministry, just understanding what Scripture means for me and what the Holy Spirit means for me in this process of of just trying to understand what God's plan is for me. And I think that that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing of this devotional. Nehemiah did not just say, you know what? I want to go rebuild an entire wall for my, <clears throat> for my heritage, for my legacy. That probably could have been the most difficult thing in the world for him to say he wants to do because it's a foreign land. It's a place where they were being attacked. That's It's not like... Israel is just ignored and forgotten. People still have that bad taste in their mouth of who Israel, Israel nation and Judah is and what Jerusalem is and how God had set them apart from everybody else. And so it's a dangerous mission for him to take on and to ask something of the king like that to say, you know what, I want to go rebuild this wall, even though I'm supposed to be serving you directly and keeping you safe because he, he is the cupbearer, which means he is the one that while the king is leisuring around and trying to just relax, he is to make sure that the king is safe by nobody poisoning him. And so now he has to find someone that he can trust that much to take over Nehemiah's spots. And Nehemiah asking for something like this is no, no small task. And so just recognizing that that's a calling from God is an important biblical context that I think sometimes gets lost. And, and I try to make it very apparent. In church technology, I think that you have to have a calling to be in church technology. It doesn't mean that you don't try church technology and realize you're calling somewhere else. But I think those that succeed in church technology have a calling to do so. And I think that that's a wonderful and beautiful thing to do. And, and use those gifts, use those talents that you have, and then keep serving in that realm. So there's so much that goes with this devotional. I know I'm continuously talking about it. It's going to be out soon. I know that I'm recording a couple weeks in advance. I'm about three-fourths of the way done with the devotional as it is right now. So it probably won't be out when this video goes live. But what I can say is that it's coming out soon. And my thought on the process is that it's all going to be available for free. But if you want to print it off for yourself, you can do so. And if you want to print it off for your entire ministry, we can have a special package where you can just print as many as you want off for your church. So we'll have kind of a special individual or ministry deal as well. So if you guys are looking forward to it, I encourage you to keep checking out Church Mag. Obviously, if you want to know when it does come out, we can. Um, I'm going to have a Twitter promotionals. I'm going to talk about it on the vlog as well. Not a lot of people that watch my vlogs, also watch the Minecraft Let's Plays. Um, and obviously there's not a lot of correlation between my own personal channel on YouTube and this one as well. So if you're interested, just follow me on social media or just keep watching the blog because we're going to have every single devotional posted on the site just for people that want to just experience what's in the, in the devotional itself. And so you'll get to see firsthand what's available. Um, but we're formatting it so you can print it off and just hand it to your um, your volunteers and your staff to be able just to incorporate and invest in themselves with the devotional itself. So we've got a lot going with this project. We're going to get it done soon. I'm going to finish off here. Um, if you guys have any questions about what a devotional 
could or should be, or if you have any reactions to the idea of having a church tech devotional. And maybe you think this, this is the stupidest thing in the world and you should just make a devotional in general and people in church technology should just go ahead and use whatever's available out there. Let me know, sound off in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Obviously be respectful and, and have a conversation. Don't talk at me, talk with me. But I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, what are you guys' thoughts about something like Nehemiah? Or is there another another book of the Bible that you think would be even better for church technology? Um, I, I did do a lot of investigating and researching in this process of what could be the first devotional on church technology that I could find out there that's Bible-based. Obviously, um, there's a lot of books of the Bible where you could, or a lot of devotionals out there that pick and choose from any book of the Bible and then just kind of craft a message, use scripture to craft around their message that they have. I want it to be um, based in scripture. Um, so you can be topical or you can be um, scriptural based in the process. I went scriptural based in this one. I may do a topical one in the future. I'm not saying that either is better or worse than the other. Um, but do you think that there is a book of the Bible that maybe would be a better scriptural based devotional than Nehemiah? Um, I'm not sure there is, but I'm absolutely open to just a conversation of what that looks like because you guys might have a different frame of reference in that process than I do. Really? It's already that high? Huh. Well, and now I'm here. Great. So leave us some comments. Tell me what you guys think. Um, when the devotional comes out, I'd love to hear your interpretation of it and thoughts on just the whole devotional itself um if anything could have been done better or if um you love it and you want to see more of it as well encouragement is always wonderful um kind of shows that it's connecting with people so leave you guys comments down below tell me what you think and i will catch you guys next time see you later bye 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 man i must be stinky is that why i'm see you guys